Hello, everyone. If you've been paying attention to OH8STN.org, you may have noticed I recently put up a post about the DIY 599PA500 amplifier. I've decided to go ahead and stitch together a few clips from a couple of different videos to give you an idea about the PA500 and making the case for why we might use a QRP radio plus external amplifier versus a QRO radio and all of the current consumption problems that entails when we're operating off-grid or in the field. Now the video might seem stitched together. And that's because it actually is. But don't let that put you off. There's some good information here. So stick with me and I'll tell you all about it. The first time we saw the PA500 amplifier on the channel, it was shown alongside the TX500 rig from Lab 599. Now, although they look incredibly similar, the PA500 is actually an independent project by Oliver Harms, Delta Lima 4 Kilo Alpha. He designs and manufactures the PA500 in Germany. Now, the very first thing you might notice is the form factor. It's just like the TX500. But in fact, it was designed to piggyback on the TX500 using the 500's modular accessory interface. Now, even though it shares the same form factor as the TX500, this amplifier works very well with other QRP radios. Now, the amplifier itself is actually pretty innovative. It can operate autonomously, changing the bands or activating the antenna tuner, allowing the operator to focus on operating the radio. Of course, the amplifier can also be manually controlled if that's how you'd like to do it. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this amplifier, telling you about this amplifier at all, is because I purchased one for use in the field with my ICOM IC705. I have absolutely no remorse making this investment, and even though I've abused this amplifier with data modes, it's given nothing but rock-solid performance for the past several months. Now, another reason I'm bringing up this amplifier is a change in methodology for my station. I'm primarily going to be using low power radios like the TX500, but I'm going to augment them with an amplifier if and when it's necessary. This means, generally speaking, no more QRO radios at my QTH or when operating portable. The idea here is actually quite simple. It's about the current consumption. Now, a couple of years ago, I wouldn't have believed what I'm about to say and I would have actually argued against it, but an amplifier with a low power radio is actually more efficient, more current friendly than trying to deploy a QRO radio, for example, the FT891 in the field. For the direction of my own station, a QRP radio with an external amplifier makes much more sense. This configuration allows me to carry smaller, lighter, and more efficient battery options than I would if I were operating with the FT891. This also allows us to make better use of our load carrying capacity since we no longer have to carry these large battery packs. Now with the low current consumption of radios like the ICOM IC705 and the TX500 from Lab 599 combined with the low current draw of the PA500, we benefit from increased operating time with the same battery packs. Now there is a downside, one single downside. Adding an external amplifier also adds to the amount of components we have to carry and also adds to our station's complexity. The upside here is we're given a massive increase in operating time. With the option to deploy the amplifier, or leave it stowed away. So now let's take a look at the features which made me choose the PA500 for portable ops over the options from Elecraft, Zygu, or the Hard Rock 50 from Hobby PCB. The very first thing we notice about these other amplifiers is their current consumption on receive. They're actually quite high. Being a portable amplifier designed for enhancing QRP rigs in the field rather than at the shack 
current consumption is critical. The PA500 current consumption on receive is just 50 milliamps. Now the next interesting feature of the PA500 is the built-in bandpass filters. Now we see a lot of operators using amplifiers purchased from eBay or Alibaba, but more than anything else, these cheap amplifiers are doing more to pollute our shared spectrum than getting a clean signal out into the world. So the PA500 has its own built-in low-pass filters with the harmonic distortion suppression of 43 dB below the carrier signal. Now another feature of the PA500 is the built-in 6x6 L-match antenna tuner. Now I actually love this antenna tuner because it's completely autonomous. I mentioned that earlier in the video. So for those of us using broadband antennas for emergency communications or whatever other reason, the PA500 will start tuning up and match your antenna to your chosen band or frequency without you actually lifting a finger. So we can use it manually if we like to. We can enable it or disable it however we like to do it, but we no longer have to carry an external antenna tuner and we're not distracted with pushing a bunch of different buttons. Now, one of the things many operators were asking with the first version of the PA500 was FCC approval for North America. Well, since August 2021, the PA500 has been FCC certified. This way, you know that you're getting a quality product, which has gone through the rigorous testing of the FCC certification process. Now, closely related to the FCC certification process is the issue of quality. We've all had these cheap Chinese products which don't last very long or are almost impossible to get support for. Well, the PA500 is designed and manufactured in Germany. Next on my list is the output power. The PA500 has a maximum output power of 60 watts. Later in the video, I'll show you how this amplifier with the right data modes can actually get your signal all the way around the world. Now the PA500 also has other autonomous features. In this case, we're talking about filter and band selection. The PA500 has a built-in frequency counter used to automatically select the correct filter and band. And as with other features on the PA500, you can use them autonomously or you can use them manually. And now let's talk about band coverage. The PA500 covers 80 through 10 meters, including the work bands. Unfortunately, for those of you who were hoping to use this with CB radio on 11 meters, the FCC certified version of it excludes amplification on the 11 meter band. So now let's talk about cooling. The PA500 features passive cooling. In fact, the entire body or enclosure of the amplifier is a heatsink. So the passive cooling and a well-designed heat dissipating enclosure are just two of the strategies employed to reduce current consumption for an amplifier very obviously designed to be used in the field. So our takeaway at this point in the video should be there's definitely a difference between an amplifier designed to use your QRP radio from home and an amplifier designed to enhance your QRP radio while operating portable. That's what this is. This is a portable amplifier for your QRP radio, which is being used out in the field. To test the PA500, my buddy Oscar Hotel 8 Hotel Uniform Bravo and I went to the island of Hailuoto, just off the coast of Oulu, Oscar Uniform, Lima Uniform here in Finland. The station was 100% solar powered. So current consumption was a critical factor in the success or failure of this portable station. Station configuration for the test was the ICOM IC705 with the Microsoft Surface Go 2 along with the Chameleon MPAS or MPAS 2.0 with the extension 
Powering the station was a PowerFilm Solar FM16 6000 LT from the Lightweight Series and a DIY Lithium Iron Phosphate 20 Amp Hour Pack I built myself. Now the first part of the test was using WinLink to send and receive my messages using Vara HF to a station in NVIS range 250 clicks away. That was Oscar Hotel 6, India Juliet. Now that station admin, Udya, was kind enough to send the average signal-to-noise ratios to me for those connections. The 2.5 dB, 3.8 dB, and minus 1.3 dB were all with 5 watts from the 705. The 8.2 and 5.3 dB were with 10 watts from the ICOM IC705. The 16 and 10.2 dB were from the PA500 being driven by the ICOM IC705 with 1 watt. Now I'm not a particularly big fan of FT8 for casual communications, but for testing, I think it's absolutely magnificent. Now my little station with the 705, the Chameleon MPOS 2.0, and the DIY 599PA500 identified as a big gun station on that day. Now, although I did make contacts in North America, throughout Europe and Asia, it was actually Japan and South Korea blowing my mind about this new station configuration and use on that day. Now, to be completely honest with you, I would love to take a QRO HF radio out in the field, but one with low current consumption simply doesn't exist on the market. What does exist is an excellent selection of QRP portable radios today, all with low current consumption. Now we also have a portable HF amplifier, which is actually meant for the field. Couple that with your QRP radio of choice, and I think we'll be cooking with fire. I received a few questions from our YouTube members and patrons about the PA500, so we'll go ahead and answer them here. The first question was, is it possible to get the PA500 with BNC connectors? And the answer is yes. The first version of the PA500 had an end connector for the antenna socket and a BNC for the radio socket. They are both now BNC sockets. So the next question was, have I noticed any differences in quality going through the amplifier versus through a tuner or direct to a resonant antenna? So absolutely no signal degradation, no distortion, nothing like that. Although I have noticed the amplifier is much happier when there's a one-to-one -one balland at the feed point of the antenna so that it doesn't have to try to tune the coax as well. And the next question, have I made the cable for the ICOM IC705 yet? And if so, how difficult was it? Well, actually, it's not difficult at all. And the instructions for making your own cable are right in the user quick start guide. Now, for those of you with other radios, the quick start guide also includes diagrams for you to make cables for other radios. Moreover, if you're as blind or nearly blind as I am, DIY599 also supplies various cables for different QRP radios. Now the last question is, where the heck can I get the DIY 599PA500? The short answer is, if you're in Europe, it's pretty easy. You go to DIY599.com and you sign up at the bottom of the page for their groups.io page. That's where you'll find ordering information and have all your questions answered. If you're someplace else in the world, it's exactly the same process for now. However, I'm hoping that Gigaparts in North America will start carrying and selling the DIY 599PA500. Now, this isn't for sure yet, but it certainly would be nice to see. I'll keep you all updated on any information coming out on that front. Now, at the moment, it looks like the PA500 is the gold standard for amplifiers meant for QRP radios, which are actually being used in the field. It's ultra portable. It's got ridiculously low current consumption. It's compatible with a variety of different QRP radios. It's got a built-in tuner. 
And more importantly, or most importantly, it's almost completely automated. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you like it? Do you agree with this idea of using an amplifier and QRP rig as opposed to a QRO radio in the field? Regardless of which perspective you're coming from, the only thing I ask is that you be polite with your comment. So, guys, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm sharing, do me a favor and leave me a comment and a thumbs up to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where people might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.